And the end of the financial year, well, that's come and gone. Public company profits are now being locked in. Already, some are revealing profit upgrades or downgrades. That has a big impact on their share prices. But late this week, around the world, markets lurched downwards under the weight of expectations that rates will rise at least twice more. Peter Maguire is the CEO of XM Australia and joins me now. Peter, many thanks for your time. It really is one of these bizarre situations that the longer that this sort of boom keeps on rolling, the markets have been very strong. But all of a sudden, they think it's going a bit too far, that rates will go higher, and all of a sudden, they come off in a big, big hurry as they have this week. Well, exactly, Ross. And I'll tell you what, it's been dynamic the first six months. Let's put our mind around it. 32% up for the NASDAQ, S&P on fire, 19 times multiple as far as earnings. And the best NASDAQ since 83. So you can't you can't say it hasn't been dynamic. And it's carried everything up. Japan as well. It's done wonders for our market, I think. And you're looking at, uh, you know, stretch valuation. So it's going to be an interesting second half, Ross. So those stretch valuations, this is it. It's almost the crisis of confidence, isn't it? When yeah. you suddenly say, well, hang on, a couple more rate rises, and therefore the valuations of those tech shares in particular really do come into question unless they're starting to generate some earnings. Well, exactly. The other side, of course, is you've got the S&P at 40% of its earnings are offshore, naturally overseas, but the tech sector at 60%. So that really puts, I, I think, uh, gives us all a little bit of an understanding. If you've got a slowing ECB, European market, you've got a, and a slowing China, then consumption is going to be slower, I think, globally, and that's going to impact earnings. So, yeah, it's, um, you, but you've got a, a, a crap, the, the VIX index is absolutely crashed. It's, uh, so it's at a very low point compared to where we've seen in recent months or years. One of the points that you make is that really the, the valuations of shares now no longer correspond with the yields, the dividend yields that were. This really has been about trying not to miss out, that the money is effectively pouring into the market and that's what's driving up these valuations. Well, exactly right. Can you imagine if you're a fund manager and you weren't involved in the market, you wouldn't have a job. So it's as simple as that. You've got to apply uh, logic to the marketplace and the marketplace galloped from Christmas onwards. It hit everyone by surprise. We had a little bit of a slowdown and a hiccup as far as the banking sector in March in the US, of course. And then since then, it's been AI, jet fuel and uh, it's just been, you know, Mac one as far as market movement. And uh, yeah, I'm... I'm sitting here scratching my head, but I tell you what, it's going to be, uh, strap yourself in. I think it's going to be a very interesting six to 12 months ahead. So which way is it interesting? Is it interesting up or interesting down? It's interesting to see. I want to see whether the S&P 500, what happens as far as uh, a pullback, if we do see it. And I'm not saying we're going to see anything dramatic, but at the moment, we've got to take on board what's happening globally. We've got interest rates. We've got a Fed that's coming out pretty much it's baked in 25 basis points on the 26th of July and another 25 basis points before year end. So that'll slow things down a little bit. And of course, other central banks coming to that sort of mindset as well, Ross. So uh, I just want to, it's, it's very difficult to forecast, but um, it's going to be, uh, yeah, certainly exciting. We just seem to strap there saying that Australian shares have sunk to a three-month low after they'd been pretty much at six-month, 12-month highs just before then. So one of the points about this is just what happens next even here in Australia with so much of it coming from an influence by what happens overseas. And yet, as I pointed out in the introduction, the earnings are now baked in. Uh, that's all history. And they're going to be revealed in August. And they're still going to be pretty strong. Well, they are, and I, I, there's no doubting that. And, you know, well, it, it comes to the other point. I think if you're looking at the Australian market, I mean, real estate's still bubbling along very strongly. You've got anyone that wants a job can pretty much get a job in Australia. Um, wage growth is, you know, not too bad. So the overall, I think, feel on, on our main street is relatively confident. And uh, let's just see where, you know, earnings move forward and how many more rate rises our RBA want to uh, hit us with over the next couple of months. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to watch that. I'll tell you what, Peter Maguire, good to chat to you on the program today. Many thanks for your time, and we'll do it again shortly. Thank you, Ross.